Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So, in today's video, we're going to learn floating point numbers. Yep, fractions, also called real numbers. Uh, we're going to learn how they are stored. They are stored in these formats called single precision and double precision, IEEE 754, 32-bit format and 64-bit format. I won't obviously just throw the format to you. If you've seen my previous videos, if you know the way I teach, this is going to happen right at the end. First, I'm going to tell you why this is required. That's the principle I always follow. Before you learn something, you should know why you're learning it. If a number is just 4, that's called an integer. 4 is stored as 0, 1, 0, 0. But if the same number is defined as a float in C programming, float, and you store it as 4.0, then it cannot be stored as 0, 1, 0, 0. Then it needs a whole lot of work to be done on it to get these formats. Why is it required? That's the first thing you'll learn. Why is the format in this particular shape? Why is the exponent biased? Why is it biased to 127? All of these have reasons behind it. Now, once you know the reason behind it, then you don't have to buy heart it, then it's there in your mind. When you're reproducing it in the exam, you're doing it confidently, plus you also know that you understood it. It's much better than writing an answer that you've by hearted, which you also not interested in writing because there's no logic in it. So that doesn't happen in our subjects. My whole, whether it is mu p or co, these are very logical subjects. So everything has a reason behind it. Now let's start. Uh, what is a floating point number? Come on, I'm taking your viva, simple question. Define a floating point number. Students say, oh, easy. Any number which has a point in it is called a floating point number. No. Every point is not called a floating point. Are we clear? Look here. There are a lot of numbers on the board. Every number over here has a point. As you can see, these also have a point. These also have a point. This is also any, any number is that number point zero. So, this is 649.0 basically. So, all these numbers have a point. Are they all floating point numbers? No. All of them are not called floating point. Now, look carefully. Look at these numbers and tell me. Are these floating point numbers? No. <laughs> are these floating point numbers? Yes. These are called floating point numbers. These are called fixed point numbers. Why are they called fixed point numbers? It is so obvious. The position of the point is fixed. Hence the name fixed point. Floating point numbers are numbers where the point can float where the position of the point is not fixed, it can appear anywhere. So formal definition, any number where the position of the point is not fixed is called a floating point number. Are we clear? Now, students say, sir, what's the whole fuss about? What difference does it make to our lives whether the point is fixed or floating? You'll be amazed to hear what I'm going to tell you now. In a number like 2.5, suppose you've done 5 divided by 2, your answer is 2.5. On the calculator screen, you can display 2.5. On paper, you can write 2.5. But unbelievable but true that number 2.5 can never be stored as it is inside a computer why 2 can be stored 5 can be stored 2 is 0 0 1 0 5 is 0 1 0 1 how do you store a point inside a computer everything is stored in registers registers are flip-flops flip-flops have zeros and ones so you can store a zero or a one you cannot store a dot inside a flip-flop so what did you hear from this all your life, you've taken calculators, multiplied, divide, divided numbers, got fractional answers all the time. Unbelievable but true. In all of those sums or all of the examples that you've done, the point that you've got is never stored inside a calculator. When you see 3.5 on the screen, understand it's stored in some weird format. Why? Because a point cannot be stored. So if we cannot store the point, how do we deal with the point? That's where we're going to start with. First, I'll tell you how do we handle it in fixed point numbers, which is very easy. Then we go into floating point numbers and understand why do we have to do normalization of floating point numbers. Then we will derive this format and then we will take examples and solve it. That's the idea. That's what you're going to do in this video. Now, this was an introduction. If you want to watch the whole video, you want to learn the whole subject from me, please come to my website. It's called www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. You can also use our Android app. It's on the Google Play Store with the same name. Uh, all you need to do is log into the website. There is a subscription amount because this is a professional service, but the amount is very low. Everybody can afford it. Make the subscription instantly. You can start watching videos for the next six months. I'm sure you won't need it for that long, but for the next six months, you can watch all the videos unlimited number of times. Watch them again and again. Also, what we have is a view PDF option. When you click that, you get the whole PDF from my book for that particular chapter. So what you get in that is the whole theory that you have to write in the exam with proper diagrams. The reason why I have done it is because in engineering it is very difficult to find the correct theory to write and you have to write theory. You don't get marks just for understanding the answer. You have to reproduce everything in the exam. So instead of you hunting for books, watching the video, then hunting for some books, scraping for answers, it is all there in your phone or on your computer. Watch the video, understand it, 
hit view PDF, learn the answer, you are set. You don't need any other reference material. So that's the idea. Hope to see you at the app or at the website. Wish you all the best. Do well. Now we're going to start.